the stories of entrepreneurs and how they overcame the struggles and challenges to get where they are today. This is Believe in the Entrepreneur with Joel Sandoval, CPA. What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Believe in the Entrepreneur, and I'm super excited because I have Miguel Rocha in the house, who is a Delano native, passionate about personal fitness, life balance, self-growth, and helping others reach their goals. Uh, former college dropout, now achieving uh, goals like no other, hitting seven figures in the solar industry, and also very excited about his new dating app launch uh called mathologist mathologist matchologist matchologist <laughs> awesome th th thanks for being on the show miguel thank you for having me awesome so miguel for for my listeners that don't really know who you are why don't we take it back you know to kind of you know you, it sounds like you've been an entrepreneur since kind of you were kind of born with that uh that bug uh tell me a little bit about how that how that became you know, who you are today uh as far as entrepreneur i started uh I think I was uh, 20 years old, but I knew I had a gift. Everybody has a gift, I think. Um, but I remember when I was in high school or even before, um, I like to focus on whatever I'm doing. Either back in the day on video games, I want to be good at something. Mm -hmm. And I always practice. And uh, I was raised in, in, uh, in Delano, and there's not a lot of things to do out there. So what I did was sports. And uh, I was pretty good at a lot of sports. But I had a lot of friends. But at my own time, um, I tried to be, be the best, the best I could be. And so I remember I saved money, you know, allowance, and got me a basketball court. And all my friends, like nice. everyone else would be video games or whatever. But I love basketball and then football. So I knew at an early age I was focused. Yeah. Right? Because I was excelling in sports more so than, than everyone else. I wasn't excelling in, in school, <laughs> <laughs> right? But I didn't want to, right? <laughs> Maybe if I if I had the bug there, I, I would have. Um, but as far as entrepreneur, um, I was a trainer at Twenty Four Hour Fitness at age eighteen. Wow! And uh, I, actually, I'll tell you a story right now. I just remembered. So um, you know, as as entrepreneurs, we have to um, we we have to accept the the L's, right? The losses. Because we have to accept them. If we don't accept them, we're just bitter and we just, we're just, um, we're resentful and right. we don't do anything with that energy. And I tell everybody, if you're upset at something, you got to use that for something. Oh, for sure. To learn or to be better. Mm -hmm. and, I, and even till this day, I'm still learning, you know, yeah, personal reasons. But, <clears throat> but before I uh, became a trainer, um, I was going into drafting. I had passion in drafting. Mm. So in high school, I was into AutoCAD drafting and straight A's there. Extra, I had the, I was the guy there. We nice. had, we had, um, what was it called? Uh, some Olympics uh, for, you know, like engineering, welding, architecture, whatever. And I got the gold back then. I think it was in junior high. Wow. And um, junior high, my teacher, Mr. Schaefer, had a friend who was uh, an engineer for Cornerstone Engineering here in town. And that guy had his own business. He was an engineer for that company, but he had his own business. But he needed an assistant or a, somebody who, who can you know take some of his business that he, he generates. Mm -hmm. So my teacher, um, Mr. Schaefer, announced it in the class. I was the first one. I got this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of bored here, Mr. Schaefer. <laughs> I want the real stuff. So yeah. My junior year and senior year, I was working. My senior year, I didn't have to, I already had enough credits, so I just worked my senior year. So a lot of people thought I dropped out of high school because mm. I would go into, um, what is it, uh, the weightlifting class. Gotcha. Then I had drafting. Then I go to work. Wow. I go to work, and I was making, I don't know, $15, $20 an hour back then. Yeah. But I was learning. So I was like, you know, a little baby architect. Yeah. Engineer. And I loved it. Um, but I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot back then. And so um, <clears throat> when I graduated, I wanted to go to San Luis Obispo to get my degree. And I, I love drafting. I love, I'm creative. I, lo I love all of that. Yeah. I love art and, uh, and drafting. Um, so I applied. Actually, I forgot what the company's called. But I remember I applied. And, again, I just graduated high school. and But I had about almost two years' experience. You know, I had my, my, uh, my boss. 
and he had he was an engineer, one well known cornerstone engineering. And uh, I applied for a job on California Avenue. I remember the area, mm-hmm. and um, they were looking for somebody. I applied because I wanted to do what I love, what I love to do. Right, I was still going to BC, but I applied to get that job, and uh, they they interviewed me then. Uh, they interviewed a few other guys, and the other guys already had like a bachelor's degree. They already had schooling, and they already went through that mm-hmm. uh, that process. And uh, they asked us to design like a warehouse, a hotel, or whatever. And then I picked this one. Long story short, um, it, it typically takes like forty minutes because you have to do everything engineering, um, not engineering, but like electrical, mm. UBC code, and kind of they they told us where to do it. And at what point? And I was done in 15 minutes. Wow. They thought I quit. <laughs> I left. They thought I quit. But then, um, but I, I already learned how to do all that, mm-hmm. you know. And they took like 40 minutes. I remember walking out and the guy's like, okay, like he quit or something because right. it was too difficult. Because he knew that I was a high school guy. But I finished it and uh, I was like, okay, we'll, we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know? um, one thing about entrepreneurship, uh, you got to manage your expectations. Right. Yeah, you because know, I think sometimes we have too high expectations. Right. And you can set yourself up to drop. Right. But if you're real real to yourself then. But uh, back then, I was like, okay, well, I did the best I could mm-hmm. based off of what I did. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, then, um, remember I was telling you, about, I was into uh, sports. Right. Well, that also comes with fitness. So my uncle um, was into fitness. He was was in McFarland, great athlete. So he kind of took me under his wing. So while I was a great athlete, I was learning about fitness, nutrition, stretching, supplements, and all that. Mm-hmm. I applied at 24 Hour Fitness. And where was it at? Um, I applied at Rosedale, the 24 Hour Fitness yeah. at Rosedale. Same thing, high school student, um, applied, interviewed, didn't have a degree, none of that. Uh, Caputo. I think a couple of days later, they called me and they said, no, I mean, we're going to go with the other guy. And it kind of, that was kind of like my first L mm. after high school. Gotcha. And it kind of, it kind of hurt. I was like, damn it. I really want you know, I wanted that one or this one. Mm-hmm. They said no. Then a couple of days later, the engineering opportunity or the, arc, or the drafting uh, job called me. I got the job. Nice. I was, like, I was stunned. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I was fast. Mm. They didn't have to train me because I already have the experience. Mm. The other guys didn't have experience. But something about that L pissed me off. <laughs> right. I was like, mm. all right. So then I remember I was with my best friend and we went, we were in uh, at White Lane. Have you ever been to the White Lane gym in 24 Hour Fitness? I've seen it, yeah. So we're over there and you know, we went to Taco Bell and I was just, it was in my mind, like, oh man, I got this job, but I wanted that one. I remember I was telling my best friend, let me go apply over here, White Lane. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, well, let's go do it. Then then the doubt came. That's another thing about entrepreneurs. Right. You're going to be your biggest doubt. You know, the, the, the battle is within yourself. Right. And the, I learned that when I was 18. So I was like, I don't know if I can take two L's. Mm. So then I said, um, I was like, no, F it. Let's just go to Taco Bell. Oh, okay. We went to Taco Bell. And I don't know what, while we were there, just something struck in my head. Like, F this. We're going to do this. Let's go over there. So we went to Taco Bell. Then we went over there. And uh, I applied. Kind of said the same thing. Passionate. I, I have been, you know, during high school, I was helping my friends with fitness. And it was a different person that interviewed me. And I think she saw the the greatness <laughs> right. in me, she gave me the job. Nice. Okay. So I picked that over the uh, architecture drive. Uh, really? The job. Yeah, I did. Wow. Was it because of the, the owl, that, the, the, the fire from that owl that kind of inspired you to like, heck no, I'm going to take this job instead? Yeah, I think that was a challenge for me, but also I was thinking, well, be at the gym, you know, um, be around different people or being at an office, you know. True. It was just, it was just, uh, you know, I was 18 years old. Right. I was outgoing and I don't regret it. I think if I would have done architecture, I would have been a great architect. Mm. I think cause just of my drive and, um, 
you know, I think architecture, you have to be creative. A lot of jobs, you have to be creative. Right. Especially if you're an entrepreneur. Um, but yeah, so then that job basically was a platform for where I'm at right now because I met one of my best friends. He was my first mentor, Jason Faust. Um, he taught me how to generate leads. Mm. So I mastered, I would say, um, how to generate leads. And essentially, you just have to have, you have to be in the position where you, you have something that some people want. Right. It solves problems. And um, as far as the gym, you know, you want to get results. Right. You want to get results. And I'm not going to tell somebody to do something that I wouldn't do. Right. So, and I usually say that with passion. So I would tell people, look, you want to get to your goal. You're getting wet and you're going to, you're going to Cancun trip. You're doing that. You got to F and do it. Yeah. You got, you got to F and do it. There's, there's no excuse because at the end of the day, when you don't hit your goal, you're going to have to look at yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And that was me 18 years old talking to people, 30, 40 years old, <laughs> but because I had Jason, gotcha. Jason's uh, four years older than me, but he's, he's wiser Right. You know, then his age. And then that's that's where I learned from. I still he's he's uh, uh, I still talk to him to this day. He's in Texas right now. Gotcha. And, uh, so I learned the goods and the bads about sales. Mm. You know, entrepreneurs, you're a sales guy, too. Right. Right. And then when you have a team, you have to teach your team what good what what are the good things to do and what what what, what are the bad things to, to stay away from. Right. So that gym. Uh, experience helped me out a lot nice I, I was able to get a lot of entrepreneur um, entrepreneurship you know ideas yeah um but um yeah brad barbo i met him he was one of my trainers or one of my clients that i trained he was a business consultant mm. and then uh, antonio gallardo he's in la right now so that job was 2001 to 2005 or six okay so i did that for about five years and i wouldn't say i was the best trainer there but i was one of the top ones nice yeah the reason i say that because balance is key the other ones that were top they were killing themselves mm. i was like i don't want to live in the gym i like the gym but i also like my free time yeah so but yeah the, and some of the trainers that i trained with before um they're still my friends gotcha yeah so that was the first first stop um then from there um i met a friend at the gym and he thought i mean i would <clears throat> i would work a lot like 40 50 hours the other guys would work more mm. um and uh the guy um actually you probably know him joe navarro oh yeah you know joe navarro's signature yeah <laughs> he got me into uh real estate lending gotcha. he was my trainer or he, i was his trainer uh in Roseville. It was funny because uh, he would work late and it would be like nine o'clock at night. And he's like, oh, I haven't eaten anything. All right, sir, go to that Taco Bell. <laughs> go get you a burrito. <laughs> so we're doing legs today. <laughs> yeah. And to this day, he's one of my best friends. He's doing really good at Signature. Um, so I got into real estate lending there and instantly, um, I mean, I was generating a lot. Of, well, you know, <clears throat> when you, what, what I do, um, I don't see my customers as numbers. That's one of the sad things about my, my, um, not the sad things, but one thing that is sad for me is I meet a lot of people, a lot of good people mm -hmm. and I see them like as family, but I don't get, I don't have time to see them. Right. So when I see them, it's like, Oh, remember, you know, back in the day and oh, how you do. So, um, <clears throat> I don't get a chance to see a lot of my old clients mm -hmm. just because I just don't have the time, but you have to build that relationship with your clients because um, even to this day, I have um, I think about 10 reps, solo reps with me. Okay. And I tell them, you know, stop thinking that you're a solo rep. Start thinking like you're a business. This is your business. So the people that you help, if you decide to do another business, guess who are you going to talk to first? Those people that you helped. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I think what's, what, what I found pretty interesting, Miguel, is that like, you know, similar to me, you know, you kind of grew up playing sports, right? Yeah. And I think what sports do to you as a kid, it makes you competitive. 100%. And it makes you, like, you know, go for the win, the W. 
And when you get an L, it's like you almost take it personal. You're like, damn. Like, was it something I did? Was I not prepared enough? Like, maybe I didn't practice enough. Maybe, like, I played baseball growing up. And, you know, I, I remember I would, whenever I'd strike out, I'd be like, dude, I'm going to go. I would ask my dad, can you take me to the batting cages? And I would just, you know, hit, you know, balls as much as possible because mm -hmm. I, it would kind of like piss me off. Yeah. Kind of like it pissed you off when you didn't get the, you know, the job at um, 24 Hour 24 Fitness. Fitness yeah. So you're like, Heck no, you know? So I think, but one of the things that we have to learn, right, is like, like you said, you got to learn how to bounce back from those L's. You got to learn how to like, hey, if I get an L, let's brush it off and move on and, and learn from that. Learn from that experience to see how you can get better. Yeah. And I think that, that that's key if you want to succeed in business, entrepreneurship. Yeah. I mean, would you agree with that? A hundred percent, even relationships. Yeah. Everything that I've learned, you know, I have... Uh, Dr. Chavez, I have some consultants there. They do the same thing. They're they're just educating. They're just bringing uh, not logic, but just common sense. Like, you know, you're upset because of this. You're taking it out on them. Mm -hmm. Isn't their fault? So, um, but yeah, as far as uh, you know, you have your own business. You ha you have to you have to be serious about it. Commitment, but you can't take those L's personal. Right. That's just the result of the you know, what you lacked. Right. You know, and, uh, but also when you win, that's the result of what you did consistently. Right. Um, and I, I have a, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know where I got this, 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 this uh, phrase, but the financial success that you have is a reflection of the skills that you have. 100%. You know, but it all depends to what industry you're in. Right. You know, because, you know, as a, as a trainer, when I was a trainer, you know, I couldn't make what I make now. Right. But I had the same drive and same skills. Right. You put yourself out in a business and then you can, there's no limit. 100%. To that. Yeah. I mean, you have to follow the trends, right? Obviously, if you're, yeah. if you're in a dying market, even if you have the drive, the willpower, it's like the market. It's not yep. there. So mm -hmm. you have to have that same drive, but put yourself in a position to succeed, which is a starving crowd that is, you know, like right now you're in the solar industry, which is like, you know, everyone's going solar, especially with gas prices and, you know, people buying electric vehicles, yeah. uh, utilities going up. I mean, it's the markets there. So now it's like, who's got the skills to, to really succeed in this business? Yeah. So on that, my my reps and obviously i'm training them on what i'm great at or what i'm good at right because if i've succeeded i want them to succeed so we don't really knock because we don't have to knock because again what i said mastering how to get leads mm. with your clients and building relationships and um <clears throat> actually my my reps my top rep is uh, uh bridget and uh she was um She's a Christian woman, very little sales skills. But I think she, she didn't tell me, but I think she had a chip on her shoulder. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, I just taught her what works. Mm. Because at the end of the day, there's certain things that customers look at, whether you're in training or, you know, in other industries. But in solar, I mean, obviously we are, we are with the company that is representing, representing us or we're representing them, and uh, they 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 did really good in the last four or five years. Uh, it's Cubix Energy, so I'm one of their dealers. I think I'm the actually only dealer in this area. They have other dealers in other other areas of California and other states, mm -hmm. and uh, they've done they've done really good uh, for themselves. And um, with Bridget, um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, you just have to explain how solar works, right? Like kind of dummy proof, because if she doesn't understand it, it's going to be hard for the clients to understand. So that's one right. thing that we make like solar is not really complicated. Mm -hmm. It's really not that complicated. And, but there are some things you have to understand as far as like the tax credit. Right. Um, you would know how the tax credit. Yeah. Works. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, I feel that, uh, you know, there's, there's, um, other companies that are, um, promoting just what they offer, mm -hmm. you know, and then if they don't offer a product, they're bashing the other ones, but you know, to each their own, somebody might 
be better with one thing than the other. So we have all the options. Nice. We have all the options, but at the end of the day, uh, we have to educate them on how solar works, what are the bad things, the history of solar, because a few years back, you weren't able to go 100% offset. So that's one of the issues that people have is, oh, I don't want to have a true up bill. Mm. You know, but before, we were kind of handcuffed. We, we couldn't give you over 100% offset. Mm. But now you can. Um, so with that, um, you know, we have the uh, pricing power over here, meaning that we can price our systems typically lower than everyone else. Mm. And uh, what I've done is um, I just want to make sure I get the W. Right. Okay. It's all about the W's. If I get a W, then guess what? Then I can ask for leads because I just earned their trust. 100%. And um, I do make <clears throat> less than other reps would do per job, but I got a lot of jobs. Right. And then it just keeps growing. Yeah. So I'd rather make li less and go wide than try to make a big. And that's what I taught them. And I'm honestly, I'm, I'm overwhelmed right now with leads. Wow. I'm, I'm looking for a Spanish speaker right now. Oh, nice. I have one rep that just came back. Mm -hmm. He moved to Santa Maria and I, I think it'll work out because I got him busy the other day. I was like, all right, are you sure you're going to do this full time? <laughs> cause it's going to keep growing. Yeah. And, uh, but it's good because, you know, I've, I've never been driven like money. has never dr driven me. Mm. It's, it's the accomplishment, the success. Right. Right. Because even to this day, I left my office at midnight last night mm -hmm. just to prepare. Cause you know, you just, you just have to understand where, what your responsibilities are. And if I didn't, if I wasn't there for the other three hours then I would have done, had to do that today. Right. And that, what I mentioned, their balance, that's part of it. Right. But my reps, um, um, very happy with them. I see them as my family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, I mean, like family, we fight sometimes. Yeah. But I, I think they, they trust me enough, um, to receive my criticism. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I had to learn, uh, actually two years ago when COVID happened. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs at the gym. So a lot of, uh, membership counselors, they came to my team. I had about 30 reps at one point. It was just crazy. Oh, wow. So I, I went from going, being out in the field, mm -hmm. you know, doing uh, admin work, mm -hmm. supporting my team to just admin work and just, you know, just taking care of their needs or helping their needs. Right. Um, jobs opened up. Some of the, some of the guys left, but right now I have a good solid team and everybody's, everybody's doing good. Um, uh, I think they, <laughs> I should have sent them your, your number because some of them paid, I think, too much taxes. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> but they were responsible, though. They had the money, so they paid. Nice. But, uh, but, yeah, solar has been really good. And just got to keep it simple. You know, I'm happy I have a balance right now. I'm doing, you know, mountain biking. I do that. Hiking, nice. doing some traveling. And uh, But I'm, I'm right now, I need to make sure I have enough time for the app. Right. That's why I'm looking for other reps because I can't keep. I can't be a, a field general. Right. I have to uh, spread spread the love. <laughs> For sure. How many how many reps did you say you have now? Uh, you have eight full eight. time and two part times, but I think the part times are gonna become full times. So. Okay. And they're all they're all ten ninety nine. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it sounds like you even had thirty reps also in the in the when you were a fitness in the fitness industry. No solar. Oh, in the solar. solar? Yeah. Oh, okay. When COVID happened, a lot of people lost their jobs. Got it. Some of my reps, they know the other guys, and they're like, "Oh, come over here, we're doing great," and you know, giving them all the, you know, the good side. But you know, it's another thing too with you know when you start doing really good in sales, you start, you know, getting bad habits. You start relaxing. Mm start relaxing and then you don't understand momentum. Right. You know, yeah, that's, I could be deadly. <laughs> <laughs> I've had, I ha I've had some reps there and if they're listening to this, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, that's just, you know, everybody goes, you know, I'm okay with, um, that's one thing I learned too. Uh, obviously be, you know, being patient with the, with the, with the team, but I'll let them lose, not let them, but because if, if I tell you this is going to happen, but you experience it, I think when you experience it, you'll learn right better. 100%. That's what happened to me. So how do you, because you know, when, when people are on 1099, like 
uh, other people that I've met that have like sales organizations like you do and they have a team of reps under them. Like one of the biggest things they have to do is like, you know, constantly, you know, they got to experience those W's, right? Because they're, they're not, especially if they come from like a W2 job mm -hmm. and they're oh, used yeah. to that paycheck. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if they don't get any W's, they're going to get discouraged. So like, how do you motivate your team? How do you build your team? Do you just have like so many leads, like for sure they're going to close deals? Um, well, I think. When you start in a new business or a new venture, you're going to talk to people about it. Hey, I'm doing this, this, and that, right? So <clears throat> we did a few things. I had, obviously, clients. So I had them come with me. But I told them, take notes. I'm going to ask you questions afterwards. If you answer them correctly, you'll get a cut out of it. Mm. These are training sales. They're my clients, but it's on you if you're going to get that bonus. Mm. The other one the other one was... was um, they would have their their leads, you know, usually immediate family, cousins, friends, whatever. And I would go with them. And since I know how to answer most of the questions, um, then it's kind of like highly higher chance for them to sign up with us. Right. If it's if it makes sense for them and if they qualify. Right. Um, so <clears throat> those two things happened. And um, I've, I've had maybe two reps that they didn't honestly they didn't succeed as much as they could have because they kind of it was just kind of like oh it was cool you know everybody's here and you know and but i don't think that was they didn't want it in the beginning but it right. was okay though they made decent money while they were here but yeah they have to see see success right away yeah because it can be bad if i mean even real estate i mean right now i mean i have some of my reps i tell them get ready why don't you be, get your real estate license you're doing the same thing everybody else is doing door knocking networking you're not afraid mm -hmm. you're like a fearless person right now you know and a lot, a lot of real estate agents here they're they're hustling i i applaud them right and everybody has a passion for what they're doing so i always uh, and we work with a lot of real estate agents gotcha also, so we're partnered up with them and nice you know, that makes it a little bit easier too nice so it sounds like you have a you do, you have a good skill of like part, you know creating partnerships mm -hmm. even with your reps right like hey if mm -hmm. you know, just come watch me shadow me and if you answer the right questions I'll give you a piece of the pie and vice versa too if they have the lead and you go with them yeah and it's because um, I learned this a while back and I, I'm not, I learned a lot I probably forget who I learned it from but you know time is very valuable for me I rather lose money than time because I can always make money I can't get my time back right so that's why I'm telling them. This is my time. You got to take notes. Mm. Most of the time, I think 100% of the time, they, they would get four out of five, right? Okay. Right? But then I'm telling them, look, you're 600 bucks. That one could have cost you that. But oh. I want them to succeed. Mm. You know, So I have a big heart, and that's why I'm okay with spreading the wealth. Right. And uh, as far as like referral fees, we, I think we pay more than everyone else, too. Nice. Just because I'm not driven by money. Money will come mm -hmm. if we do the right business. Right. And I think the real estate agents and brokers in town um, can see that. And it, and it comes from, you know, a good place in my heart where I'm genuinely going to help their clients. And it, and it is a big thing where if another professional is giving you leads, you have to do a really good job. Because For sure. You're affecting their business, too, and their future. One hundred percent. Yeah. So are you, are you still in the real estate industry as well or just solar? No, that happened between 2005 and after the crash. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> but it was a good couple years before the crash. Um, I wish I would, ha would have had uh, a little bit more help there. Mm. I, I made some investments. I probably wouldn't have happened today. But that's an L I learned from mm. really quick. Right. <laughs> but no, um, right now, as far as real estate, I'm probably going to be involved in just purchasing and you know, gotcha. stuff like that but like getting clients i just i don't got enough i don't got enough time man yeah <laughs> but i do encourage my reps to do that right because it's it's real estate's always good people are always want to buy and uh i have i have you know real estate friends they're like hey when are you gonna buy your house i'm like well there's not a lot of options of what i'm looking for you know acreage and a certain area so i'm just gonna wait so i might have them just do like a a Spartan run and whoever wins, that would be my real estate agent or something. There we go. <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah, I, I encourage my my little cousin. Actually, is one of my reps, and I'm really happy for him. He, his his best month was last month. He's he's going to Northridge right now. He's 24. Shout out to Diego Pena. What's up, man? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm trying to give him the best advice. Nice as I can because I tell him he wants to get into real estate. He's going to school for real estate. Mm. And, uh, he's going to graduate, I think, next month. And I tell him, yeah, when when you get into real estate. You know, everything that I'm teaching you now is going to help you then. For sure. Definitely. Yeah, 100%. You have to be very uncomfortable in sales. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I think is interesting, too, Miguel, is that you said that your reps don't door knock, right? Uh, yeah. So it's not, it's very non traditional, um, which is great because you kind of learn how to generate leads at a very young age. Yeah. So, you know, what, you know, obviously there's so many different ways to market yourself. You yeah. know, like you said, at the end of the day, it's about solving a problem. But like, what is your, your, you know, the platform that you're using to generate leads? Well, my clients, my clients and um, um, we do some marketing, but really not. We, it's, it's a, a lot of times it's our clients, mm. honestly, because, you know, our clients are going to make a decision and if they make a decision you know there might be you know somebody in their family like cousins sister whatever brother mother Mm -hmm. and they were probably looking into solar but if they made a decision now you potentially have more leads right so um and the same thing happened when i was a trainer i was really strict with my clients they got results oh you know maria's you know you're losing weight and Mm -hmm. you know it's just a matter of being consistent what you're doing but as far as the clients i mean i think um i think the result is is uh being consistent with taking care of your client not necessarily trying to get a certain commission right because that's just not how how i've succeeded Mm -hmm. you know and i think um i would say i think five of my reps will i think they're they're shooting to hit like six figures at least i don't know maybe the 200,000 but nice but it, it's a lot of work cuz it's you know if it's a lot of volume mm-hmm. it's a lot of paperwork follow ups and stuff but then that's going to challenge you to be more organized for sure and i tell you know some of my reps i'm just, le- I'm just letting you know you might have to get an uh, an assistant yeah and then they ask me why don't you have an assistant cuz i'm freaking crazy and i don't i don't <laughs> sleep <laughs> i live in my office yeah um, but i and and i actually I probably do need to get an assistant um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's probably where we get the majority of our clients. Yeah. Ref- is, is referrals. Yeah. Referrals are key. And so, I mean, what you said earlier is like, you know, once you get that W right, you get that client to say, yeah, let's move forward. Yeah. That's probably the best time to ask for a referral. But do you, I mean, are you setting up referral agreements with them as well? Or just asking for business? We're just asking for business. Gotcha. I think, uh, most of my reps are very genuine. They don't come off as salesy mm-hmm. because all we're really doing is just, just explaining to them how solar works. Mm-hmm. And I show them, um, you know, what, how to price out the systems where it's extremely competitive because I don't want to get in a back and forth match. Right. They can get 5,000 other quotes if they want, mm-hmm. but I'm going to be one of the bottom ones. Mm. And, I come off as a person that's very busy or doing a lot of things. And I think people respect that. Mm -hmm. So um, they also are, they're also very busy. Right. Because they have to follow up and, you know, other, (coughs) other reps that are, are not succeeding in getting leads. There is a reason why, Mm -hmm. you know, I could figure it out if they come and talk to me, but I kind of already know why, but you know, if you're if you're getting trust or you know from your clients, that means you know you gave them something that they were looking for, mm-hmm. and they made a decision. We're not we're not salesmen. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically, we are, but I don't see it that way. I'm just building relationships, right? You know, because <clears throat> it goes it goes a long way than just you know, hey, your system d- turned on. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll constantly text me call me he's like hey my friend wants to go solar my sister wants to go solar can you talk to them oh my sister's looking for a house because i let them know i have uh, friends that are real estate agents so i'm kind of like someone uh, someone of an asset to them Mm. so 
that yeah. way they can they trust me in helping them in different ways. And we work with uh, contractors, electricians, mm -hmm. because sometimes they will need a new main panel upgrade. So I kind of, uh, you know, put myself in a position where my clients know, like, hey, Miguel knows, you know, now I know CPA. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But, you know, that's just, it, it's. I don't see it as a, a sell, like a, just a job. It's It's a business. For sure. You have to carry yourself that way, too. 100%. And what I thought was interesting is that you mentioned um, that you're, you know, you always come out the lowest, right? Because they could get 50 different quotes, right? Mm -hmm. um, so are you the lowest because of the company you work for or because of the creative financing that you can offer? Um, a little bit of both. But uh, the owner of Cubics Energy, um, that's, I'll tell you a funny story how I met him or how he met me. Um, so my philosophy or how I approach my clients is I need to get W's. I need to get yeses because then I have more people that I can potentially talk to. And um, um, <clears throat> so they, they're out of Visalia, but they do business all over California and all the way up to Florida right now. And um, I had business cards. I was working for uh, another company that they're actually really good, too. They're just up north, and they were trying to, you know, come over here. And I'm from this area, so they're, they promoted me over here. I was the one that's taking care of this area. But I was, I guess I outbidded three or four of Cubix's reps. Mm. And the clients had my business card. I guess one of the reps knew the owner. So he got my number and he called me. He's like, hey, uh, let me speak to Miguel. I was like, yeah, this is this is Miguel who's speaking. Oh, this is Tyler, the owner of Cubix. I said, okay, great. How can I help you, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man, you keep, you keep beating my reps. What are you doing over there? I was like... I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I love the guy. I just talked to him the other day, and uh, there's two owners of Cubix, uh, Mark and Tyler. And uh, long story short, I told him what I do, and I said, man, I, I'm just, I talk to, I take care of my people, my clients. Mm -hmm. So if you want my business, you got to give me something that's worth my while. But I'll commit to you, and uh, eventually I did. And he's, he's, a, he's a cool guy. So he, he gave me a, a dealer pricing, so. Nice. And uh, I, <clears throat> I forward that to my reps. I want them to, you know, I don't really, you know, people get overrides. Right. Uh, I'm hungry. Nice. I, I don't, I don't focus on the overrides because I'm still going to get my business. Right. But I did that for my reps and, you know, help them get W's because it, you know, it can be a little bit competitive. For sure. A little bit competitive. Yeah. But we, we try to, we try to make the rules. <laughs> for sure. We, we're. We're working in a different, different world over here, I guess. <laughs> nice, but uh, to each their own. One hundred percent. So uh, what I thought was pretty cool is like you, you're pretty good at spreading the love, right? You're good oh, at yeah. spreading like, hey, you know, I'm willing to, to, you know, I'm not motivated by money. I'm motivated by the relationship that's going to come, and that kind of ties into you, you know, starting this dating app, spreading the love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, so we're going to be doing not podcast, but love casts. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> We're trying to get that trademark. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, and uh, like I was telling you earlier, um, I was on some dating apps, and it does take some time to have some success. Obviously, you have to have a, a profile, and, uh, you know, I just noticed that a lot of the dating apps out there, they're, they're kind of the same. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really the same, you know. Occasionally, they'll have some information that you can go look up. But, you know, if people wanted that information, they could just go on YouTube. Right. Or somewhere else. But re people really don't do that. And people want, okay, if I'm going to get on here, I want results. I want dubs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't get dubs. Mm. They don't get messages back because there's fake profiles. Mm. And I'm like, you guys make a lot of money. You guys will monitor this. Right. Okay, we're monitoring that. Mm. We, have, we have some things that is going to eliminate you know, fake profiles. Um, <clears throat> but there's just a lot of things that it's just, you know, there's, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, success that can happen with apps, you know, video games or, you know, in dating apps in specific. Um, and um, I had this idea years ago and I actually just messaged them. Um, the app that I was, I'm, I won't mention their name, but I was with uh them because it was at the time they were pretty good and i messaged the support you know i said like, hey you guys should do that i gave them a list mm -hmm. and and then i explained to them this is why 
I didn't get no reply, no email back, no, hey, thanks for the reply, nothing. Wow. So then I was like, do they even have, like, customer service or anything? Right. And a couple years later, I started talking to people and later, hey, why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? And they were like, yeah, it's, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. And uh, you want me to tell you some of yeah, the Yeah, yeah, keep going. So <clears throat> you ever heard of speed dating? Um, a very, very, not, not much. Okay. Speed dating is basically, uh, you know, usually have it in person. Okay. Where you have like a table and you have, let's say 15 girls on, or females on one side and 15 males on one side. Mm. And you talk to somebody for about five, 10 minutes. Depends on how much you want to put, you know, put the limit, the time limit. So after a certain time, you know, the alarm goes out and then the guys get up and they switch to over. So you're just kind of getting to know somebody for five, seven, eight minutes, you know, see if, uh, see if there's any chemistry or any spark or interest, whatever. Gotcha. So, um, so I thought of that idea, but doing it actually in video, mm. we, we have it hopefully ready. <laughs> nice. And so what that's going to do is, you know, for one thing, I think, uh, social skills, you know, people with social skills are going to have to, um, come out. Right. You have to talk to people. For sure. And if you're not in sales, it can be kind of comf- uh, uncomfortable. Right. So that's going to help with that. Mm. And not only that, you know, let's say I'm talking to one girl eight minutes. And let's say I said something vulgar, just, you know, disrespectful. And by the way, we have a flag button. So um, that's going to monitor certain things. Mm. So, um, um if I say something wrong, they can flag me and they give me a reason why. We'll see the video. And then that myself, I will get a recommendation of go to this mm. webinar where we have a consultant do live chatting training. Mm-hmm. It comes with a membership. And uh, it could be gentleman's coaching, communications coaching, dating's coaching, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way, if you do speed dating and you don't get results or well, at least we have the support waiting mm. it's your responsibility to at least go do it right and it's just right there nice all in one because we do want to help we you know people are wanting to meet somebody some people just want to meet somebody just because um they don't want to be alone um maybe they just moved into a town so they're not looking for something too serious but you still have to get put yourself out there right and if you're an introvert you might not be going out to clubs or right. different social gatherings. So online dating, that's kind of like what you want to do. But a lot of the other apps don't have the, these these features. So the speed dating is there to um, help you talk to an individual face-to-face well, through video and see if there's some chemistry. But also um, it kind of prevents, like, if you go on a date and you're not clicking, mm-hmm. you know, you want to leave, but right. speed dating is kind of like, well, you got a timer. So, right. You know, it, move on to the next one for, for the females. It's not going to be like, Oh, Hey, I got to go. It's like, Hey, the timer's up. You know, we got to go. Right. But for both sides, like there's help, there's female consultants, dating coaches. And I think, uh, in anything, there's always a need for, for help. And, uh, an expert is usually who you want to reach. And sometimes people look for it. Some, sometimes people don't. Right. So, and then we have uh, the webinar feature where it's kind of like, well, the low cast feature. And uh, that's just putting together males and females or whoever, you know, t- who wants to be on there to um, have a discussion, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And there's a set of questionnaires. It might be talking about relationships or how to get over a previous relationship. What are the good and bad things to do? Mm-hmm. And then they'll have like 10 questions to answer afterwards. Or anybody else who answers those questions, they get matched up. Mm. So I can look at, or a girl can look at my profile, and she can see like four webinars or locasts. She can get to know me before we even meet up. Nice. In a personal level, mm-hmm. you know, with certain certain subjects, and that that will help have you know, better first dates mm. instead of having to start first date and then you're starting to know the basics. So we want to be able to have people get to know other people. You know, kind of personally, but it just depends if they're active right. in, in the app. Right. You know, because we always try to figure it out. Sometimes it's good, but sometimes it's good to get a mentor and a coach. 100%. Yeah. So that's just in, in dating. And um, 
I don't know to this day. I don't know if any other app is is doing that or or taking. <clears throat> I think what's happening there, to be honest, is um, it, it costs money to mm. do that. Oh yeah, and they don't want to do that. Yeah, but guess what? I'm gonna do that. Nice. <laughs> it sounds. I mean, it sounds. If I was, uh, and you know, I'm I'm, a, I'm married. I'm a yeah. married man. But if I was in the dating life, it sounds like the perfect fit because, especially as a CEO that runs, you know, a business, it's like you don't have a lot of time to. Mm -hmm go out and date you know it's like especially when you get older it's like yeah. you know your time is valuable like you're saying so that speed dating is is awesome or like getting to know somebody before you even hit them up yeah and you know what um i think uh both sides males and females they all um i think they kind of want the same thing is well it just depends on who you are but you know I, you can consider me as like a uh traditional traditional person and i don't want to have kids I want to have kids and family, but I'm not going to force it, you know? Right. And, um, dating, the dating apps, it does help you, uh, communicate with other people. And then if they put their profile good, then it's going to give you kind of hope. Hey, you know what? I like this. Oh, she likes riding horses or she likes this or, you know, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think that's a good tool for people to find love, but because, they haven't had success or if they had people that didn't have success, it's kind of a turnoff. Right. You know, same thing like solar or, you yeah. Know, oh, you know, my friend got solar. She owes a thousand bucks. Right. But it's because somebody didn't explain to her, you weren't able to get a hundred percent before. So right. you just have to answer certain questions and hopefully they can, you know, a lot of, a lot of times negative information travels faster than positive <laughs> for sure i mean you're just trying to create dubs like you said you know even yeah. within the dating app you've done it in the solar industry i mean you're yeah. doing it now and it's it's just you're just taking your experience into this new industry which is awesome so let's say someone you know you do the dating app and someone you know you're interested in someone mm -hmm. but it takes two to tangle right yeah. so like you might be interested but then that other person might not so yeah. how did how does that work uh well in the app um, so obviously if they message you and for some reason you're not interested, you get, I think we have like 20 different options that'll say why, mm. uh, complete your, you know, add a little bit more clear pictures, finish this part, like anything. There's a lot, mm. but you're going to get the, the answer. Gotcha. And so instead of just being ghosted, <laughs> right? Yeah, because then, then you don't know what's the problem, right? You know, and certainly the, the dating apps are not going to tell you the problem, right? You know, so we're helping you get the or deliver the problem nice. right, that they, this person sees because everybody's going to be a little bit different, mm -hmm. but at least you have I say, oh shoot, I didn't my my picture is like terrible, right? Or my grammar's terrible, right? Or something, you know. Um, but, or it can be, it could be different. Like, you know, then maybe they're looking for somebody who's educated or has a bachelor's degree or whatever. Right. Or religion or whatever. Right. But at least they can give you the answer. So that way you're not like, oh, shoot, what, what am I doing wrong? Mm. And uh, for myself, I know I, I explain all the positives. Right. I dubbed, you know, that. But I've, I've had some L's, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't need to go over, we don't need to go over that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need another hour for that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, same thing with dating. So it's if you don't know what you're doing wrong, you need help. And right, right now there's no app that's telling you what you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. They can they can tell you what could potentially go wrong. But live, or, you know, in the moment, you, I don't think anybody's doing that. Right. And we want to be there to help you. And, hey, you know, maybe maybe take a picture, look, get some swag. Right. You know, clean up, clean yourself up. Um just uh, explain yourself a little bit better, be a little bit more charismatic and, you know, smile a lot. <laughs> yeah. To me, it's, it's, it's almost like customer feedback when you're in sales or in yeah. business. It's like, they're just telling you, you know, what it is that they did and did not like about you. And yeah. it's easy to be defensive and say, you know, not put your guard up. But I think if you actually accept it, it's like, Oh, yeah. I'm looking for someone with more physique, you know, that's probably a little bit on the bigger side. I'm looking for someone that's a little bit smaller. I'm a small girl. I mean, that, that mm -hmm. all that stuff is important but if you don't ask or you don't get that feedback you're just kind of like you said ghosted or you're kind of just left you know unknown and you don't know what to fix yeah and i'll tell you this man like uh in solar i started solar actually up in sacramento and i i, I was living up there for a minute and uh 
no one was getting re- leads. Everybody was door knocking. And I'm over here getting a ton of leads. <laughs> and I remember one of my reps. Actually, she she just invited me to her party, a uh, uh, birthday party. Uh, her and her, uh, her husband, they're doing a party in L.A. But I remember she asked me, how are you getting all these leads? I ask. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a crazy idea, but I ask. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I just had more confidence mm. than her. And I think she just started in solar. Mm. And maybe sales but i've been in sales since i was like 20 right and i've been doing solar for about seven years so i've had like 12 about a dozen years of customer service or sales Mm -hmm. so uh yeah i just told i just asked you know if 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 they allow me to help them Mm -hmm. then in my mind they're allowing me to ask for leads right and i'm gonna ask the worst thing they can say is no not right now or wait till the system's installed Mm -hmm. okay put in my calendar i'm ask you then Mm-hmm. And I'm just managing. Oh, you know what? And obviously, it does help working with a company that does their part. Obviously, right. as far as like customer service and um, installation and, and paperwork and all that. Mm-hmm. So I've been. That's another thing that I had to choose too. I was very picky with the companies I am going to be working with. But at the end of the day, um, you control what you what you're doing, and so I'll do the best I can do, and. If you say yes to me, then at that time, I'm going to, I mean, not like right away, like we're signing paperwork. Hey, send me some leads, but you know, maybe the next day or two when we do a side audit. Right. You know, but I just ask. Nice. That's, that's my niche. I ask. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's something so simple, but something that people forget to do, or they're maybe not, you know, they're afraid to ask, you know, and it takes, like you said, you had that confidence to just, you know, just ask. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they just didn't, um. They were afraid to ask. I don't know. That's, I don't know. Right. Maybe they, they weren't sure what they were selling. <laughs> right. Sure. But that's the thing. I was just, I just ask, you know, if, if, uh, if I don't get the yes from you, then it's kind of like, I, to myself, I like, well, I'm not going to ask because I failed. Right. And I have to do a better job next time. Right. You know, but so I take the L and well, let's move on to the next one. For sure. So quick question, Miguel, because, um, I mean, you're having success in the solar industry, right? You have reps working for you that are making, you know, six figures, you know, some even close to 200 and, you know, you're, you, you got things going. So why transition to this, you know, new world, you know, of dating? Well, I have a business partner and I wouldn't do it if I'm not confident in, in, in a way where I can succeed. So I have a developer right now. I have another one standby. I have marketing people. So I have a team. It's not just me. I mean, it's not one guy. Right. And that's why I'm moving forward. But before then, I had the idea, but I had to have the team. Mm-hmm. I can't do this by myself. Right. I, I won't do it by myself. I have a lot of people. And then consultants are really, really, really good. At right. What they do. So um, it's, it's an idea mm-hmm. that I think... Uh, a lot of people like right um and once it it comes to fruition then um i think the results should be the same right is, is they like it because of x y you know all, yeah. all the all the different options that we offer but i just like to work like my mom and dad they work hard mm. i think if i don't work hard i'm disrespecting them right so i'm always working if i wouldn't been doing this i would probably be doing something else mm-hmm. like flipping houses or whatever mm. But I like the app idea because I believe in it. Right. It would have. I would have done it, like you said. Oh, if I was, I would be there. So I believe in it. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk uh, is one of the people that I followed, mm-hmm. um, and a bunch of other guys. But he also said, "You're gonna have a product. You gotta believe it. You have to be your own client or your own uh, person that would buy your own stuff, right? Uh, product or program or whatever." Mm-hmm. And I believe in this because I, I've had. S- I would, I mean, I've, I've had some success in the dating apps, mm-hmm. um, but as far as communicating and meeting other people, mm-hmm. right? Other people don't for whatever reason. Um, and as far as this app, it's going to be a little bit more better. It would be easier for everybody. Right. Because I would have the support and also the, the features too, so they can be in front of other people. I think the speed dating, oh, we have other features too, but I can't, I won't bring those up right now. Um, 
but I think it's a great idea and it's, it's just time. Yeah. Because I think I had that idea in 2007. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have another idea in the fitness industry and to this day, no one's thought of it. Wow. My best friend, Jason, oh, they're like, dude, you need to go do that. I was like, yeah. well, let me do this first and do that and then I'll go here. So it's just, you know, solving problems. Yeah. If you have an idea or a business that can solve a lot of problems, then you should do it. Yeah. And it's just, you know, my business partner, he's uh, he's from New York. He's a web designer, graphic designer. He's, I would say, more creative than I am. So I had some ideas. And even to this, um, the name Matchologist, mm -hmm. okay, we thought different names but matchologists is uh, we got it because a mixologist mm. it's a mixologist they create your desired drink right a match matchologist is the app that's going to help you become your desired individual nice if you choose to go on the webinars nice and like you you have to, you have to work on you first right right so there's a saying instead of you looking for the one why don't you work to be the one or right. your, your own self mm-hmm because, you know, we have to see our look in, look in the mirror every day. And if we're not happy with each with, with ourselves, then, you know, it kind of, we take it out on somebody else. Right. And so you have to find your peace. Um, I'm a Christian man. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I'm working on myself. Nice. <laughs> Regardless of what I'm doing in my work or fitness or wherever I'm eating. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you, you saw an opportunity, right, that was lacking in the marketplace, you know, because yeah. you've been on these dating apps and, and you even sent an email with like, hey, these are all the things that I think would make your application better. Yeah. Completely ignored you. And so you had this idea. Um, so, I mean, are you also passionate about the actual industry or is it just the opportunity that attracted you? No, I, 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 I do um, have a passion for that industry in terms of like having people find love right because my mom and dad are married they're still married for years you know and uh i know it's different now than before you know 50 some years ago right whatever. but <clears throat> i think um you know for people like bridget and and ian um, bridget's one of my reps she just got married to ian and great guy great guy i went to their wedding a couple weeks ago and uh i'm happy for her very happy for her and I wish that for everybody. Right. She's very happy. And, and uh, I tell her, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for another rep. So ask him if he wants <laughs> to work. But, uh, you know, I, I've had my share of relationships where um, I had to work on myself mm -hmm. as well. They had to work on themselves. But we're, we're still friends. You know, they live elsewhere, mm -hmm. not, not here locally. But, um, you know, I think... Uh, if someone can find somebody or put themselves in a position where, you know what, maybe, maybe I messed up in a relationship, but I can get help at least here mm -hmm. and consistent help, you know, cause it's not just like you can get one session and you're done. We're going to have continuous help. Um, and w our system is set up to where, you know, if you find somebody, then you guys can do, you know, kind of group counseling, not counseling, but kind of like give you ideas of how to, um, keep keep the relationships you know spicy or exciting um because you know we're over here you know entrepreneurs or, or w2 employees or whoever we got tv you know a lot of things that are pulling us elsewhere right and you know in a relationship um we need we need to be pulled to the experts right where they're going to help us and be assets to our lives yep so I am passionate about that because otherwise I wouldn't spend all this money on that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, but yeah, I, I look at my mom and dad and, you know, they're not perfect. But they love each other a lot mm -hmm. and they sacrifice a lot. And uh, I think that has to uh, happen in a, anything that's successful. For sure. I love the coaching part of it because, you know, I think to get anywhere in life, you need a mentor. You need someone to like a third party just to tell you what to fix about yourself. Yeah. Like, cause you don't really see it. You know, you could look in the mirror, but it's almost like you don't have the same vision as like somebody else. Like 
when my wife sees me in the mirror and I see myself in the mirror, she's like, oh, what about this long cow over here? <laughs> and, I, and, you know, and I'm just looking at my face and she's looking at other parts of the body. So having that coach, that mentor that say, hey, if you fix this part, you'll look much better. Yeah. And, and I love that you're going to have that as part of your app. Yeah. And, you know, obviously we're starting with, uh, you know, communication, relationship, sexual health, um, and different types of, uh, you know, experts. But then we're going to go to finance and other things that will that even people should know of, you know, when you get into a relationship. Because all that is, you know, finance, you know, uh, children, parenting, all of that. There's there's always an expert in, in helping you get, become better. Awesome. And definitely, uh, you know, I'll be on the app. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're, you're pretty much creating happiness. Because I think uh, Ty Lopez said, you know, he's yeah. pursuing wealth health, love, and happiness. Yeah. And you really need all four. Like you need, without wealth, you, you know, you're going to be struggling for money. You, you know, you're barely making ends meet, but if you don't have health, then what good is the wealth? Because yeah. you're, you're just sick. You're not, you're in bed. You're not, you know, you, you can't do certain activities, but then if you don't have love, it's like, who are you going to share those experiences with? Yeah. Who are you going to share? You know, when you come home and you have success, it's like, you know, I want to be able to share my success with my family members, with my daughters, and see them happy. And it's Definitely. like when you combine all three, finances, wealth, love, it's like you're just in this ultimate happiness state, and you're creating that. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know, I can't tell somebody, you know, go find God or Jesus Christ, go to church, because that's, I think that's important. Um, but uh, as far as... Uh, individual like you have to find yourself too and uh you have to um know your strengths and weaknesses and so for us for us men um i mean we got we got to put in the work mm -hmm. like we got to work we were we were made to work yep right and um but with that we also have to lead you know by example mm -hmm. and we have to um protect our our family uh, spiritually and physically and uh and by physically i mean you know don't order the pizza because <laughs> that can be an addiction a bad addiction but um yeah i think i think the app will do really well um we're we're already getting feedback from people from los angeles and but i'm just taking it one day at a time um that's another thing i would i would uh recommend entrepreneurs or well, at least that it's worked for me is is just be consistent with your energy because I've seen a lot of times where you get too excited and then you drop. Right. So although there is a lot of anticipation with the app, I'm just gonna take it one day at a time. Yeah. I want you, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for it to get dry so I can go ride my bike. That's what I'm looking <laughs> forward to in the next two days. I was telling her, you know, it's not, you know, the rain's not good for, you know, hiking. Well, not hiking, but mountain, mountain biking or golfing. Right. And I ended up finding a passion of uh, mountain biking, but I'm not doing those crazy jumps. But that, to me, that's like me living. Nice. Right. I'm not doing anything else that's going to... Well, I was going to say I'm not doing anything else that's harming me, but I just, you know, took a bad fall the other day. Oh. <laughs> that was my fault, though. I gotcha. It was my fault, and I learned from it very quickly. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I have uh, high hopes for it, and uh, but at the same time... I, I I consider the the time that everyone else is putting into it too. Right. So I have to, I have to stay focused. Yeah. Because everybody else has high hopes for it. For and, sure. And I have to, I have to make the right moves. That's awesome, man. I'm I'm super excited for you because I think this idea of you know the app, especially nowadays, everything is technology, right? I mean, yeah. Uber took over the taxi industry. Um, you know, Uber Netflix. Eats now instead of, you know, having Netflix. to go out. Netflix took over <laughs> Blockbuster. So, I mean, this is this is amazing. I think this idea is going to really take off. And I think, um, like, for me, if I were, if I were uh, you know, in the dating world, I would be all, all, all over it. Yeah. It just sounds like the perfect fit um, for the, the lifestyle that we're living in right now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's a, it's a great, uh, it's a great time to um, bring this up actually here with you because, you know, we're talking to, about entrepreneurship and and dating apps did help me you know mm -hmm. for sure um but it just depends on what your goal is because i have friends who are entrepreneurs and they make time they go to clubs and do all that but um it's just you know 
everybody's different. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I would not have the time. I would definitely need some kind of application <laughs> like that. I mean, I I worked so much, like you said, we're made to work, right? So, yeah. I would have to make the time, and I think this is like the perfect, you know, thing. You know, Amazon, you can you don't have to go to the store no more because you can just buy something on oh, your phone. Yeah. So it's the same things. Like, I don't have to go to the club no more. I just go on <laughs> to matchologist. Yeah, back in the day, you would like uh send flowers to your girl now you can send her like a gift card from amazon right make her world <laughs> yeah exactly uh yeah um yeah so um i mean after the the app is launched i mean we got so many ideas events live events uh we're gonna expand and like i said um looking forward to it right now um with solar it's it's so crazy right now and uh with a team that's smaller right now it does help me kind of uh not worry as much because i want to make sure everybody's moving forward mm -hmm. you know, even though they don't some of them don't focus on momentum but i have to make sure their their projects moving forward so but yeah everything's hectic right now and the, the best thing for me right now is just to go ride uh, actually mountain biking is kind of like my therapy nice i don't think about anything out there just stay in my lane <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact that's kind of what i do uh stay in my lane my uh my Instagram page, I just I barely go on there because mm -hmm. I'm just focusing on my own stuff. I, yeah, I can't. I just I just focus on my own things. I That's awesome. Promote a lot uh, of my other stuff. Gotcha. So, when do you expect like this to launch? I know that you're taking it one day at a time, and that's the best advice you can give because you can get you know really high, like you said, those expectations. You can put yourself down, but you know, what's your kind of goal of launching this thing? Well, actually, uh, my developers were supposed to submit uh, something to the Google Play Store, and uh, it might be tonight. Really? Yeah. Well, they told me two, three days. So today is the third day. So was, we we're already approved with the Apple Store. Nice. So we're waiting for Google. We could have already been on Apple, but we want to do both. Right. So, so it might be this weekend, um, Monday, any day now. Nice. So, but we have a lot of things ready. But it's it's come. <laughs> we're gonna do that ribbon because it's it's been a it's been a minute. I know COVID kind of slowed things down because mm -hmm. the developers are in India. I gotcha. And uh, they 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 had to start working from home, and it was kind of hectic for them. So we had to be a little bit more patient with them. But yeah, it's it's. I incorporated that in 2017, man. Wow, wow. It's five years no it's it's not yet five years it's september of 2017 yeah that's when i that's when i uh actually you know what this this is the moment when i said you know what f this we're gonna do this it was like 11 o'clock at night I was watching some tv which i rarely watch tv now but i saw a commercial of that other app mm -hmm. and they did um the stories right you know how like instagram has stories right so they did that mm. and i'm just like you're just copying that, like Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And to me, it was just kind of, dude, you're just being lazy. Yeah. So at 11 o'clock at night, I called my business partner. I was like, all right, dude, we're getting this, we're getting this done. Nice. And I incorporated that night. I haven't stopped in since then. Nice. We had to wait because we had to wait or um, find the right developer. Um, we had a team. You know, obviously, we tried. Sometimes, you know, as, as entrepreneurs or just individuals in general, you try to cut corners. Right. And I almost cut corners, but I was like, no, we need a team. Mm -hmm. We need a team. We need a front end, back end, like the whole team. Yep. And you pay what you get for, like what you said. Yep. Um, <laughs> I think you said that in one. So CPA, everybody should get a CPA because it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. 100%. That's awesome, man. I'm super excited. So for my listeners that want to follow you, it looks like you, you say you don't really use your Instagram because you're staying in your lane, but um, you do have your social media handle here, which is AMG53 underscore CEO. But more importantly, if you want to you know, get into this dating world or if you're looking for love, you know, there's an Instagram and Facebook business account called Matchologist. I apologize for mispronouncing it in the beginning, but this is like an awesome opportunity for people that are looking for love. And, and you've, you've done a great job of spreading the love in solar and the love industry. So I congratulate you for your success, Miguel. And it's really been an honor having you here on the show. Thank you so much for having me.